Summers in northeastern Greenland are short. For three weeks every year for the past two and a half decades, polar researcher Dr. Michael Sayer and his team have visited Dunneborg Research Station on the shores of Young Sound. Their purpose is to measure changes in climate over time. When I met them, they were weighing and measuring kelp. By collecting the kelp out in the fjord, we can actually identify the amount of blade that it has formed this year. And uh, what we can see in our time series is that the length is directly proportional to the amount of light. And that is governed by sea ice. So what we see in recent years is that the sea ice melts earlier. And that results in more light uh, reaching the seafloor where the kelp then transform it into growth. So although we see a general trend, we also see a lot of variability. So in years where the sea ice disappears early, the kelp are happy. They, they transform that into more growth. Um, so that is an example where, where climate change can actually be beneficial for a, for a species. They, so they're extremely light limited up here with, with 10 months of, of ice cover. And any light they get above the average is something that can readily transform into to added growth. And, it, and it's not only in the ocean. I mean, the, the amount of light in the ocean is uh, limited by sea ice, but we see the same thing on land, where light for the plants is limited by snow cover. Although we, we see the ecosystem in general responding in many ways to climate change, many of the changes are actually beneficial because it means that you have more energy going in to the bottom of the food web in, the, in terms of more light for plants. During our visit, we experienced some days with record high temperatures and unusually there was no sea ice. I asked Michael what the changes mean for the well-being of the fjord ecosystem. If you look at the fjord, it's not actually a problem, except that we are transforming a system that is then being directly responding to anthropogenic change. And uh, of course, we have to discuss that. I mean, it's a huge uh, impact for the Greenland society. The Greenland society in general rely on the marine resources. And in many areas, it's actually beneficial. You have new commercial species coming into Greenland waters that were not there 10 years ago. So obviously it's a discussion of whether we think that's a good idea. It depends on, on who you're asking. If you're asking the fisherman that, that is now making an, an increased catch, uh, I don't think he sees it as a problem. But of course, you're, you're changing the environment and we have to decide whether we, we, we are okay with that. A change that we experienced was that it rained, an unusual occurrence in an environment that normally gets all its moisture from snow. This of course has consequences. Erosion of the fine soil that has been created by moving glaciers is one. The creation of a hard crust that makes it difficult for musk ox and reindeer to graze vegetation that is normally covered by soft snow is another. And of course, we come to the change that gives researchers sleepless nights. The most dramatic thing in all of Greenland is the, is the melting of the Greenland ice sheet. And it, it, that has been, together with our colleagues in the Greenland Climate Center, has been one of our main focuses, trying to understand what does, what does melting of the ice sheet really mean for the ecosystems in the fjord. And I think one of the main conclusions is that it's the key driver of change in the ocean around Greenland. That's the, that's the meltwater from the Greenland ice sheet. Glacials are retreating across Greenland, which means that you have more and more glaciers transforming from marine glaciers that terminates in the fjord and produce icebergs and are in many ways beneficial for the primary production because they bring new nutrients to the surface where it's converted into to, uh, food and energy for the food web. Once those glaciers retreat on land, then their effect becomes the complete opposite. Then you have this murky uh, water coming out from the glacial rivers, which basically prevents light from penetrating into the ocean. So 
So what we basically see in this fjord is that the, uh, about the inner, inner 30 kilometers of the fjord where we have the murky surface water from the glacier is basically a dead zone. There's very, very little light and there's very little productivity. When you, you can't find kelp like this on the seafloor and when you look at the at the ocean floor where there's out here, there's tons of mussels. You see, yeah, you can see eider ducks right now. There's walruses feeding off it. There's very, very little in the inner part of the fjords. And that, that effect will increase as more and more marine glaciers keep retreating and eventually will, will be on land. And you have more and more of this murky water creating dead zones in the inner part of Greenland the fjords. My assignment in this remote Arctic fjord was to make a documentary about walrus. Through my meeting with the giant marine mammals, I hope to gain insight into their changing environment and to see how they are adapting to this change. The five weeks I spent here were dramatic. The walrus were where we expected them to be. The Arctic landscape and climate was spectacular and changeable. The weather swung from snow to rain from days of record high temperatures to freezing Arctic gale. And halfway through our visit, the walrus mysteriously disappeared. It's hard to draw conclusions about long-term climatic trends from one short summer, but I certainly experienced an environment that is changing.